All right. Imagine serving 100 million meals a year. That's Ooh. about how many lunches Minnesota schools mm. serve. And that's why we've decided to highlight innovation in school lunch all month here. Today we head to the Prior Lake Savage Schools where local farmers and kids are growing some of their lunch into Russia Eats. <laughs> The spaghetti. It might be the busiest restaurant in the southern suburbs. <laughs> Jeffers Pond Elementary School serves about 400 lunches every day. How is the food? It's actually really good. Today we have homemade spaghetti meat sauce. Emily Malone runs the nutrition program at 10 Prior Lake Savage Schools. In Prior Lake, we're kind of just right on the edge of a lot of agriculture. And so we were really trying to think of um, how we could take advantage of that. On this day, they're using turkey sausage from Ferndale Farms in Cannon Falls. In the fall, they get corn from a local farm and have a three day festival. It's hard for small local farmers to connect with schools. So it was a little tricky, but I think we figured it out. Sometimes the farm is hyper local. I told my friends, yeah, I grew that pepper. Logan, Veronica, and Dev Mini are part of a team of high school gardeners. We had like potatoes, we had green beans, we had peppers, cucumbers. Um, the green beans are my favorite because they're <laughs> I really enjoy them, but they were easy to pick too. Grade schoolers garden too, including fourth grader Olivia, who celebrated her birthday in the dirt. I found a fat carrot I got to have at the end of. We planted beans. I gotta have it. It was like really good. Of course, offering organic veggies and locally grown food doesn't do much good if the kids don't eat it. Abby and Lauren, have you guys had artichokes before? Yeah. No. Every week, Try It Tuesday hits every school. Would you like to try an artichoke heart? Teaching about unfamiliar ingredients like artichoke hearts and persimmons. Do you guys try a lot of new foods in here? Yeah. I love the food options. I think that they're pretty healthy and they're all pretty good in my opinion. We are um, definitely trying to bring scratch cooking back into our schools. Why is that important? We can limit our ingredients to um, the few ingredients that it takes to make a spaghetti sauce. We don't put high fructose corn syrup in any of our foods. So we can um, just get closer to our food source. Mm. And I think it tastes better. The sauce is really tasty, don't you think? It's a lot more expensive. A lot of our um, vegetables are also organic. Most of them are local. And it is more expensive. However, they like school lunch and they want to eat it. So I wondered how do they afford it, and the reality is they get more customers. This is kind of how school lunch works. The more kids who actually buy school lunch, the more money the district has to be able to experiment with new programs. School lunch is still an incredible bargain. It's under $3 right. a kid wow. mm -hmm. is what you pay really good. Right. right in the elementary level. Mm -hmm. So, uh, and it was good. I was going to say, who among us is not jealous of this program? Oh, those or veggies like this? were beautiful yeah. there. And Try It Tuesday, what a great idea. I think it's great because a lot of those kids might not be exposed to some of the foods mm -hmm. that they're even trying. And what they'll do later then is in a, a week or two, you'll see artichoke hearts on the menu. Mm -hmm. And then the kids have already tried it. Mm -hmm. So it's cool. The kids who garden were telling me, like, oh, we're, we have a garden at our home now, too. Because you get inspired at school yeah. and then you want to do it at home. So it's really great, really great effort going on awesome. out there in Prior Lake. Oh, I look Savage. forward to all these school stories. This is going to be great. Waconia next week. Oh, Waconia. So. Okay.